Hello, students, and welcome to another thrilling episode of Coach Stroud's What to Read While Quarantined. This is episode 19, and back by popular demand is another Q&A episode. So um, for this, I sent out a couple of messages asking people to send me uh, questions, uh, things that you want to know about me, uh, whether it's books, life, music, stuff in general. I uh, got quite a bit of uh, replies, and so I'm going to... You, you might see me looking over the camera a little bit. I'm going to read a few of them and uh, on my computer and, and answer them. All right, so the first one I have is, let's see. What are you going to do once quarantine's over? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Once quarantine's over, I am probably going to go to every single bookstore that I can drive to. Um, shopping for books, going to bookstores is one of my favorite things. Drinking some coffee. Um, and, and just sitting down and, and looking at new books that have been published, stuff that's coming out, some old classics, things like that. I love doing that. That's one of my favorite, favorite things. Also probably go and see a movie in a movie theater. Um, I love seeing movies in theaters. It's just not the same at home. It's not the same atmosphere, you know, and the, the sound and whatnot. So if I could also see a concert, that would be really cool too. I, I, I miss seeing shows too. Uh, the next one is, what's your opinion on second chances? Everybody needs a second chance and a third and a 35th. Every, you just, we just need to just keep giving people chances for the most part. You know, there's a few exceptions where, you know, got to cut those chances out. But, you know, I believe in second chances. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, let's see, the next one. What is your answer to everything, life, and the universe? Well, that's a tough one. Uh, my answer to everything, life, and the universe would be coffee and snuggling with a puppy. Ain't nothing else matter. Well, I mean, your family matters and stuff like that. And, you know, I love my wife and my kids and stuff like that. But uh, my dogs are never mad at me. So if I'm having a bad day, you know, they're always there for me to lift my spirits. And coffee is always delicious. So I guess my answer to life and everything is just coffee and snuggling with a puppy. Yeah, sounds about right. Sounds pretty good. So let's see. Next one says, if you could do any job, would you stay a teacher? If not, what would you do? Well, being that uh, being a teacher is my dream job, uh, I am actually living my dream, which is phenomenal because uh, not a lot of people can actually say that. So I'm very fortunate, very lucky in that situation. Um, if I had any other th a job, though, uh, I would like to actually, as, as weird as it sounds, I would like to work in a, uh, in a used bookstore that also sold uh, CDs. Uh, I love music. Uh, music's a huge part of my life. I actually got a guitar right over there and amp. And, uh, and then down in my basement, we have tons of instruments. But um, I love making music, playing music, listening to music. Um, so I think uh, owning a secondhand uh, bookshop and CD shop would be, like, pretty sweet. Maybe, maybe for retirement. Um, <clears throat> I do have a dream that I share with my wife uh, all the time. And she, she kind of chuckles at me that... Uh, what I would like to do for like af during retirement, I guess, if if the, the used bookstore and CD store doesn't work out, um, I'd like to get a whole lot of land and fence it all in and uh, have a like a sanctuary, a place for old dogs to go and, and, and die, which I know that sounds kind of morbid. And some of you are probably like, whoa, it's, that's weird. But hear me out. Um Shelters and stuff, uh, animal shelters are often filled with uh, with dogs uh, that are, are too old and won't get adopted or people drop them off because they're getting too old and their medical expenses are going up. And it just kind of makes me sad. Um, I would like to give those dogs a place where they can go run and, and, and be free and, and pass naturally. It, it just, you know, them passing away in a shelter just it's really sad to me, so... And it's kind of morbid thought, but that, that would also be like another dream job. Uh, let's see. This question came in from Dr. Landry. He says, uh, if you could teach anything, what would it be and how would you approach it? What would the uh, length of time, what assignments, and what products uh, would students make? So I know this, again, kind of random and out there, but if I could teach anything, it would be relaxation through camping. Now, what do I mean by that? I would literally teach a course on um, going out into the wilderness and setting up a tent, building a fire, um, 
you know, hiking, stuff like that. And some of you are probably thinking, isn't that what the Boy Scouts do? Yeah, 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 yeah. They do a lot of that stuff. But we would also have assignments on relaxation, as in taking a nap in a lounge chair, learning how to stare at the stars properly, learning how to cook special foods over the uh, uh, over your campfire, um, things like that, you know, enjoying being out in the wilderness alone and stuff and um, special emphasis on, on um, teaching lessons on how to properly read, uh, read a book while sitting by a campfire, stuff they don't teach in the Boy Scouts. So uh, that would be kind of fun. <clears throat> Let's see, uh, an old friend of mine named Jason Cook, uh, he asks, if you could have one <laughs> supervisor in your early pizza career, who was the most influential and in sh- uh, in shaped your life for the better and the most, uh, for the better, the most, and why is it me? So this is kind of funny. Uh, I get asked questions all the time by students about um, what did I, what kind of jobs I worked growing up uh, in high school. And I said, you know, I was a, I was a porter uh, for a car collision place and I worked at Target. Uh, but my best job, my most favorite job that I worked um, was at a place called Sapoli's Pizza. It was originally a Johnny's Pizza, small chain, uh, but Sapoli's, there was only like two or three of them. And I worked with some of the best people I've ever met in my life. Um, I, I look back on those those memories of, you know, making pizzas, uh, making subs, lasagnas, uh, running the telephones, the registers. That's what I did a lot. Uh, it, it, they, they were a lot of fun. Um, the, the people I worked there with were amazing. Uh, I, I, I was thinking about what my dream shift would be. Um, I think I would have Elva, one of my, uh, really close friends to myself and my parents and to my grandma. Her name was Elva. Um, she's a nice lady still out there kicking. Um, I would have Elva work in the floor and probably Vic, who is the boss, uh, boss man. He was probably, you know, making pies and then, um, have uh if it was like a friday night or something i'd have jason who the guy that asked the question there as well he was help help making the pies and then we have either seth or bobby uh running the sub table and of course we got to have james uh doing the deliveries now i know to most of you students out there you probably have no idea what i'm talking about and it sounds completely bonkers and crazy but uh when you work these jobs and stuff in high school you're going to make lots of friends and stuff and they're going to influence you in, in many different ways Jason, who asked the question, um, you know, he, he influenced me in a ton of ways. Uh, he had a great, he has a great sense of life, uh, extremely hilarious. Um, he, he got me listening to punk bands like Subhumans, um, you know, which brought me out to like the addicts and, um, and like the descendants and stuff. Uh, he also introduced me to, uh, against me and, uh, the album reinventing Axl Rose, which was a cool record. And uh, a band called The Parasites, which Jason played in at the time, uh, which is phenomenal. And oh, also The Last Chucks, phenomenal band as well. Uh, if you ever get the chance, go look up The Last Chucks and The Parasites. Really, really good music, good punk rock music. Um, but working with Jason was a ton of fun. And I miss those days. I miss sometimes just working in the pizza shop. It was awesome, you know, good blast. Uh, hopefully everybody there uh, that I mentioned before is doing well. <clears throat> let's see uh serena hayden she was uh my nco in the military she asked uh what is the most important thing you hope your students take with them after having you as a teacher or a coach uh honestly i hope the thing that uh students take away is how much i love and care for them and you know i'm, I'm hard on kids i i i tried i try my best to to be the best person i can be for them to be the best educator i can be for them um it, it can be tough at times, but uh, I love these kids to death. And at the end of the day, they matter so much to me. Who they are as individuals matters so much to me. And it's interesting because my wife and I had this conversation earlier. And as much as school and the content that you're teaching is extremely important, sometimes you have to let go of that and focus on the relationship that you're building with the students. And making sure that they know that they are good people and watching them grow into those good people. And, and I don't know, it's sometimes I feel like educators and teachers, we forget about that sometimes and we only focus solely on the content. That's only a portion of what we do. We have to focus on, on, on students becoming better individuals. And in my opinion, you do that through making connections with them. 
I have a lot of students I've made connections with and some that I've tried and I failed at, you know, it's, it's a part of being a teacher. Um, but yeah, thank you, Smash, for the question. Let's see. And last one, a uh, good friend of mine, Sheila Arp, she, we went to college together. Uh, she said, name a time in your life when you wanted to quit, like totally quit and just give up. And what event happened and what did you or someone do to show you not to quit? Um, that's a good question. Before, before I was in, um, bef I, I, I went to school after the military and I was going to school to be a computer programmer and I, I was miserable. And, um, I remember my, one of my professors came into uh, class one day and he was screaming at the top of his lungs on the phone and he slams his phone down. And he turns to all of us and he says, you know what? If you guys are not happy in here, you might as well just leave. You might as well get out of here. If you're not happy with your life, there's the door. And I got up and I walked out and I went to my truck and I called my dad and I was freaking out because... I, I just walked out of class and here's, you know, like I'm supposed to be this computer programmer guy and I was miserable. And so I remember telling my father on the phone, I'm like, dad, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm upset. You know, like I'm miserable going to school for this stuff. And he says, well, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I want to be a teacher. And he says, go be a teacher then. And as simple as that, something that simple, um, it, it meant a lot to me because I was going through this really hard situation where I, I was not believing in myself at all. I'd come back from war. I have got out of the army and my situation was not well at all. Uh, I was having a lot of issues transitioning back into civilian life and some other stuff going on. And it, I don't know, like I just, I had little self-confidence about, um, whether or not I would be a good educator or whether or not um, someone would actually want me as their teacher uh, or want to hire me. And I don't know why I was so down on myself. I mean, like really, really, really down. And I wanted to quit and give up all of school altogether and just be done with it and go work a job that would make me miserable and call it a day. But the simple phrase that my dad said, well, then go be a teacher then. Like, as lame as that sounds, that's what I needed to hear. And it, it changed my trajectory. Uh, and to now, again, as I've said before, I am living that life that I always wanted to live. I am uh, an educator. It's the best job in the world. Uh, as much as I love the Army and, and people like Serena Hayden and uh, my good buddy Ben Fox, uh, who mean the world to me, absolutely, um, and I thank them for all that they did for me while I was in the military, military. Um, that's not my life that, you know, the army wasn't, is, was not my, what made me who I was. And as much as I love Jason Cook, uh, and the people from Zapolis, because they really helped shape me as a teenager into a young man, uh, before the military, as much as I love that, I, it's still not the same being an educator, Teaching you guys, teaching you students is the best thing in the world. Um, I almost quit. I almost quit school and gave up. And I'm glad that I didn't. I'm glad that some other people saw that I had something in me. And that's what I want to share with students. That's why it's so important to me to make that connection with students is so that y'all know that there are people out there who believe in you and love you that might not just, I mean, your parents, they're there for you and stuff like that. But then there's also other people out there who still love and care for you as well. And I don't know, it just, that's, that's what being a teacher is to me. Um, wow. I've rambled for almost 15 minutes. Uh, but I really appreciate you guys, all the questions that were sent in. Uh, to my students, I love you and miss you. Hopefully this gives you some insight on some stuff about me as a person. Um, I can't wait for quarantine to be over for us to, to hang out and talk books again. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I love you guys. I miss you. Until next time. See ya.